Hi guys, Passive Shooter here, doing a sort of guest thing for Chris. Today I'm going to be showing off how Gucci I am by reviewing not one, not two, but technically three pieces of Mystery Orange goodness. And we'll be starting here with this old gen three day assault. So we're going to start with the external features of the bag. You're looking at the very obvious black tri-zip system on this older model. These are tan on newer models. There may be some other changes, I don't know, don't have one. I'm not rich enough to be buying these all the time. Wasn't technically rich enough to buy this one. So that's very obvious. There's these two compression straps which go out heinously huge to, I don't know, carry a mortar or something in it. Elasticated side canteen crap pouches. The base of the pack has daisy chains. They are not PAL spec, they're about twice as big. Then on the top of the bag, there's this novelty sized patch of pattern matched velcro. Two pockets, one for sort of keys, small bits of crap, whatever you want to be carrying around. A slightly bigger one, which encompasses all that area. This lid area is roughly the size of your average bum bag, fanny pack type arrangement. And then this zip has a zip on both, zip pull on both ends. It opens directly into the main pouch and it means you can have a radio aerial coming out one side, hydro tube coming out the other, the same thing on both sides if you're some kind of comms wizard or thirsty man. The side that faces body, very beefy, uh, well padded, lots of space and mesh straps with the ability to adjust the included sternum strap. The fact this has a sternum strap is something that people need to talk to first beer about because they tend not to. The adjustment tri-glides, tri-glides? Yeah. They are uh, fixed. They don't clip off like some backpacks that can make it a bit difficult for getting on and off, so it depends on what you're doing. I tend to be a radio guy, so I'm not normally ditching this. These clips here that sort of look a bit superfluous, they are for the big foam pontoons. I don't wear plates very often, so I don't have them in there. This is for the adjustment of the height of this semi-rigid frame construction. There's a plastic frame that sits to about the crease of the shoulder strap here and it goes all the way down into the body of the pack. It's very supportive. There's also visible these flaps here. These are stowage for a belt that I have only ever used while doing fitness tests, but it's nicely padded, uh, not too thick. It still stows away quite nicely. You don't I'd forgotten it was there until I made this video, to be honest. A big, chunky, fast-tex buckle to stick it together in the middle. Very adjustable, and it f when it folds up inside the pocket to save you getting a big, uh, bulky mess here, it actually lies up the side of the pack to about here. And, as I say, I barely notice it's there. I tend to forget that it exists, but I don't use it. Moving on to the inside of the pack, undo compression straps, and you can just rip it open, nice and sturdy material, and then it clamshells open, sort of like an alien egg. Stuck a bit of tape over my ID stuff, sorry. It's not broken, that's just me. There's a field of pals here with a slip behind it. That's not a pocket, it goes all the way through. Underneath that, there is a pocket. On each of these wings, if you like, there's a zipped mesh pocket which you can also pass stuff behind to hold it in place, long items, uh, aerials, things like that. You can also do the same with these sleeves here. These are actually pockets, they're not sleeves, they go all the way to the bottom of the bag. This slip behind field of pals is actually a very important feature in this bag. If you're someone who carries a radio, what this does is it interfaces with Mystery Ranch's radio carrying piece. Uh, they come both in a slip behind and PALS versions. The version I have is the slip behind, that's made of Cordura. This padded flap will sit over the top of this PALS, and then the wings and webbing straps will hold a man pack radio in place. Very interesting adjustment method, they've got this sort of torsion, tension, friction lock thing so that you know it's not going to slip off your radio. And installation is pretty simple, you just undo the bottom holder, 
pass the whole thing through the sleeve. It's easier when there's not a tripod directly in front of your face. You can do this in the field pretty quickly. If someone hands you a radio and for some reason also has one of these, it is snug. So obviously your radio doesn't go slip and sliding around. The inside it's faced with Hyperlon. There is not much more to say about this bag beyond the fact that it is very well constructed. All the materials are amazing. Well thought out layout. And its capacity means that it's supposedly about 28 litres. I feel like it must be bigger than that. Because even with a VHF radio in there, I can fit in a spare bivvy bag, OP stuff, wet kit, warm kit, rations, ammo, everything that you get made to carry when you're carrying stuff around. That is obviously the military version. It's heavy, downsides, heavy, bulky, doesn't top flat very well in a Bergen. Obviously not so much of an issue if you've got a radio in there all the time anyway. And it doesn't fold down very well if you're the kind of person who likes folding them up, sticking them in big pockets. So, we've seen all the features of this military version. Got questions? Because I haven't covered something, stick it in the comments and I'll try not to be a knob about answering them. But what we have on the market as well is this, the Mystery Ranch Scree 32, notionally a bigger bag at 32 litres, but the layout is almost exactly the same. Lax is obviously external PALs, and the materials are different. Those are the main differences. So the side pockets on this are a sort of tweave material, like you'd get on cry trouser knees, with a base that is the same material as the rest of the pack. It's a very lightweight nylon material. The compression straps are mainly moved to the side now. So the side at the top, across the main body at the bottom. It's got these gear daisy chains going all the way out the top. I would be reticent on the material front of ripping this open in the same way that I do the military version. I always undo the zips. But it has the same mesh build to the top pockets, which still exist. They're still there same design. There's no zip on the top for passing through radios, hydro and stuff, there's simply a sort of pass through hole for hydros. The frame system is essentially the same. I've not taped this up because specific stuff. Frame system is the same. However, this is a slightly lighter duty spacer mesh. I feel like it would catch more easily on plants, vegetation, that kind of thing. There's obviously no armor spaces. It's considerably lighter overall, in fact. The belt is where the main differences are. This is a sort of tube with Velcro on the inside. And there's a pouch on each of the wings for your phones and stuff. To take it off, you actually have to uh, undo these little clips on each of the wings. This is a feature I actually don't like about this particular Mystery Ranch bag, along with it being not made in America. That does make it a bit more affordable though. Velcro in the middle, whole belt slides out. It is quick to do, and if you were the kind of person who wears lumbar packs, you could probably stick a big pouch on the middle of that belt and wear it like that. But then you have this separate belt to do something with, take up more space somewhere. I like the way that it folds up inside the bag on the military version. Come to the inside of the bag. We find just a big elastic pocket where that PALS field and small pocket were. And just simple long pouches here that you could stick a bladder in, I guess, if you didn't want it being supported especially. Well, if you don't mind that too much. One on each of the wings. You can see the inside of the hose pass through here. So obviously this is about a quarter of the price. It's about half the bag, I would say. <laughs> obviously a lot of the labor costs 
are removed because it's not very compliant. Because it's civilian stuff. Very lightweight. Does fold down fairly small. Obviously the frame inside limits how small it will actually fold. You have the problem of what to do with the belt if you don't want it. But you can transfer everything between the two if you have both like I do and know where it will be. It's got most of the same design features, a lot of the same thought process has gone into it. There's a lot of space, you can fit basically everything you'd want to be carrying for a couple of days in there. There are daisy chains, little loops for attaching stuff if you want to carry it on the outside. Retrieve pockets. A very capable backpack. At a very reasonable standpoint for civilian use. It's not excessive in the same way that the military stuff is as a price point if you just want to use it as an everyday bag or a hiking bag you know you can knock yourself out with it it'll be very high quality very good last a long time based on the use I've given it already it still looks brand new I've taken it out a little bit uh, it doesn't stand out a mile away the branding's very subtle you know it doesn't scream steal me even though it's nice and Gucci uh, uh, I think that's everything for now as I say I'll answer any questions that you have posted in comments where I, where I see them. Obviously, if you like this, uh, Chris's stuff is much more professional. I recommend you watch that. I also suggest you follow him, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all those good places. The website, I think it's the full mine dot something, he'll tell you. You can follow me, Passive Shooter, Passive Shooter on all the usual places, Facebook, Instagram, uh, VK, Cena Weibo, Airbnb, and Grindr. So yeah, see you guys later.